Oye. After dark, dad bod after dark, <laughs> which is just no topic talk. So no topic, which means all topics, all of them, mm-hmm. including like, politics, right? Oh, definitely. But uh, for I'm example, interested. what is your silliest fear? That one just came up on the random topic generator. Oh, yeah? My mm-hmm. silliest fear? Mm-hmm. What do you mean by... Si- well... Like, what's this... What Not, like, what's a rational fear? Like, I have a fear of heights. That's a rational fear. So, like, what's something a, that you're afraid a of? a rational fear? Yes. But we're talking it's about fear something that that's more irrational. Sense. Yes. Like, if you're afraid of gummy worms, that would be a silly fear. Well, that's silly. I have an irrational fear. Okay. Of being like buried underground. Okay. I, I mean, that's I rational. It's not silly at all. God, it's dark. I feel it's like that's really a pretty dark. normal one. I don't. I, this is hard. I mean, I have no fear, so it's kind of a ridiculous question. Here's one. Okay. Uh, all right. You okay? So Nick won't make it, and he sent me something with his face on it. It's weird. So. Oh yeah, he sent that to me too. Silly. F- awesome. I, don't, I don't have a silly fear. I don't know. Okay. I, I mean, I guess it was just a bad question. So we sounds like it. No, but none of these manly men have any silly fears. Is what I'm no. learning. I mean, I have seen one of you guys. Make sure that they were wearing socks into a shower because they were afraid of getting athletes. What? Oh. I think that's kind of a silly fear. I don't know anything about what you're talking about. No? Okay. But What's that about, Cameron? Socks? But no, in that's I, weird. I didn't name names. I'm just, Here's your explanation. I mean, I've, I've worn flip flops into showers, but socks? All right. I, I that need just to soaks set it all up, up a little bit. So we went to the dirtiest gym. In the United States of America, it reminded me of it was like Phoenix, Eastern oh, yeah. Bloc Soviet, circa 1982, gym. Okay. And I don't know if you guys have ever had athlete's foot. It is horrible. Mm-mm. And I had like the worst case of athlete's foot ever in college, to the point where you know my teammates in the trainers room would gather around and and kind of stare at. It was a sight to behold. Case. It was a sight wow. to behold. So I promised myself I was never going to get athletes. But now, you know, if I say it out loud now, it sounds ridiculous to wear <laughs> socks in the shower. But it made me feel better. I never got athletes. But so. I mean, that's true. You didn't. It was just <laughs> odd. <laughs> odd to me. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah. But But mind you, the only other clientele in the gym that that time of morning was 65 and over and they didn't care so no i'm fine no, they do not no they didn't have athletes foot. they had omaha beach oh my gosh yeah they're all, they're all heroes every single one of them wow so yeah now that i've been uh you know had my secrets exposed who's going next like, I'm, not I'm that trying kind to of think game. of one, but I, I, I mean, I do have a fear of heights. I have a very big fear of heights, but that's like a normal fear. That's not silly. I think yeah, your I, fear, Eric, is kind of, it's interesting. I mean, it, maybe it is irrational, well, I have a fear but it's not of like a silly too, fear. But it, it's, it's not, it's like irrational because I'll, I'll, if I think about something to a certain extent, it will get me kind of anxiety ridden. Like if I think about standing at the top of the Empire State Building 
And if I think about like putting myself close to the edge and I think about just think about, well, what if I climb to the top of that fence? You know, it's like, first of all, why would I do any of that? Second of all, I get myself worked up. So, I mean, it's silly in that I'm literally at, you know, almost sea level and I'm worried about a height that's 2000 miles across the country. So, Mm -hmm. well, I mean, okay. I get it. I think, I don't know if it's a silly fear, but like I, I have this fear of like never like always being caught. Like, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, I'm all, I'm always have a fear of like, what if, and so like I can extrapolate the weirdest things. Like what if, I Genghis forget Khan this. Had, oh. Like, what if I forget my blockbuster card? Like, <laughs> something like that. Like, I'm going out to town, but I need to make sure I have all these things. And if I forget this one thing, I'm gonna. That's gonna be the one night I need that one random thing that I've never ever needed. But that's not like a. I don't know if it's a fear, or if it's just an idiosyncrasy. But that's hmm. kind of my thing. So is it like just a preparation thing? If I if I don't have this object or whatever, I feel unprepared. Kind of, but it's like anytime I do something that's not in my normal schedule, like going to work and stuff, like if it's a night out on the town, for example, which never happens anymore. But Pink let's, town red. Yeah, but I'm like, okay, so I got my keys. I got my wallet. I got my phone. Should I go take out cash? Maybe, but what if I go to a place where I need to have cash and they don't accept cards? Because that's a thing that happens ever. Um, or something like that, where it's just... I'm always trying to Overthink. think of any possible variable for what's really a mundane situation. Okay. Yeah. But I don't, again, I don't know if it's a silly fear. It's just a, a thing. Um, oh, here's another one. What's one thing you miss about being a kid? I miss being able to eat less anything money, less I wanted, problems. consequence free. What was that? Less money, less problems. Yeah. No, I miss being able to crush an entire pizza and then follow that up with a couple of hamburgers and feel great. <laughs> like, absolutely fantastic. That's one thing I miss. Yeah, not having consequences of having stayed up late or something like that. You just sleep in longer as a kid, you know. You finish that movie and, yeah, you know, I'll just lay in bed until 8. And you slept good, too. Yeah. Every night's sleep was awesome. You're waking up without back pain and knee pain and ankle pain. Oh, man. That was pretty stellar. Those are the days. Like Mm. last night I went to bed. And I went to bed early, and I hurt the whole night, so I couldn't sleep at all. My whole body just ached. There was no reason. There was no, like, I hadn't done anything strenuous. I hadn't eaten poorly or drank a bunch of alcohol. I was just going to hurt all night. So I didn't get to sleep until, like, 1.30. It was terrible. Mm. But when I was a kid, man, I could, I could sleep upside down on the couch, and I would wake up the next day, and I felt fantastic. Yeah. In fact, I slept upside down on your couch in your dorm room when I first met you, Eric. Really? I My just couch? crashed on your... Yeah, well, it was like a futon couch. It wasn't even a real couch under your guys' loft. And I would just crash on there all the time. And it wasn't yeah, a comfortable right. futon. It was just... No, yeah, it wasn't at all. <laughs> but, yeah, you could kind of pass out anywhere. Mm-hmm. And just be okay. Yeah. And those were the days. Yeah, that that's something I do miss. Cause I'll wake up, and I'll I, I'll be in pain until I start moving. I gotta I gotta warm up before I can be out of pain in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, an appropriate topic for Dad Bob history. I think. Yeah, we're just talking about how much we hurt. That's perfect. <laughs> We can't eat anything we want. 
we hurt all the time, even when we're resting. Yeah, and I and I can't now. stand pain meds. Mm. So after my back surgery, they gave me you know oxycodone or whatever it was. I just I took one of those after my back surgery, and after that, I'm like, no, just give me Advil, because mm-hmm. I hate. I was talking to someone about this today. I can't stand pain meds, like heavy duty pain meds. They just put me in a fog, and I'm worthless. I can't stand not being sharp in my head yeah and i'm sharp through three drinks after three drinks things go downhill quick but those three drinks oh but you're in peak form for those three drinks. i know i know yeah. they sharpen me up yeah, it's like is that your fuel. fourth or your fifth drink on your desk right now Th- this is drink one nice nice shot there <laughs> we couldn't you know, my tell. golf game picks up at drink three but then mm. plummets at drink four yeah it really does a real sweet spot there. <laughs> For about a hole and a half, man, he's Tiger Woods, and then after that, I, he's I passed, could win the Masters if we did a hole and cart. a half a day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there he goes. Eric picked up his ball. He's going to continue tomorrow. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, all right. Staying on the child vein, I guess. What was your favorite book as a child or a series of books? Mm. That's a better way to put it. I didn't read as a kid. I didn't start reading. I didn't enjoy reading or read voluntarily until after sixth grade. I mean, that's still a kid. I know. I know. But Okay. I used to love those choose your own adventure books. To go through door number one, turn to page 28. To go to door number two, go to page 54. Oh, man. Well, let's let's get Kyle on and let's play but some Dungeons and Dragons with Cameron. Yes. You ever it's do any role playing, Cameron? I didn't. You're primed for it if you did it's the... It's like choose your own choose. adventure, but no reading. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. The only well, reading what, what you need I know, to do is for mechanics. Everything I know about those role player games is from the show Community that was on NBC. Oh, that's the greatest and, show. And it seems pretty cool under those Oh, oh it is. If, if Jake and You've I have any like indication. A really good narrator. Generation after generation of only the coolest kids did Dungeons and Dragons. Just <laughs> FYI. Oh, yeah. they, they have a tendency to not propagate the next generation. Jake and I played in college. Mm-hmm. I was the dungeon master. Oh, you know what? Yes. Exactly. And, and I remember, and we've known each other for, what, 10 years now. And this was early on when, when we knew each other. And you guys were kind of, we were feeling each other out and everything. And you said, yeah, are you ready? Are you ready for tonight? And you said it to, to Jake. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, what are these guys doing? Who's the DM? And you were trying to, like, keep it. I, I don't know if you were just trying to keep it under control or if you wanted to keep it exclusive so that I didn't know what it was. Well, it must but have been real exclusive because it... You guys seemed really smug about it. And I'm like, what's the DM? And you're almost, uh, Dungeon Master. And then you got into a whole thing. And I was like, oh gosh, because are nerds. I'm trying to remember when we played in Arizona. I don't remember. Oh, well, I remember we went to a couple of gaming shops on the weekends. Yeah. But... Huh. I don't remember. Yeah, you guys took me to one gaming shop in in Mesa one time. Um, yeah, we did. And there was a bunch of high school kids kind of playing in the back, and we showed them what's yeah. up. We showed them what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were <laughs> impressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, um, I don't know. I don't know a lot about it. it seems kind of interesting. Eric, it's you gotta gotta get a game started. Be the DM. I mean, yeah, if we're going to meet up a few times every week on here, we might as well. But Yes, let's do it. Kyle would be Kyle. the better leader for that. Who? Kyle. He, he would do it. Yeah, I tried. I know. Yeah, it was fun, but it was hard to meet up. Um, okay, so what I've learned from this question is nobody read when they were kids, except for Cameron. Okay, okay, so Who after sixth grade, books? after sixth grade, I picked up Jurassic Park. And then I spent like seventh and eighth grade reading Michael Crichton. Yeah. 
So. I read a lot of Michael Crichton in middle school too. Jurassic Park, uh, Congo what was Andromeda's. Terminal Man, Andromeda, Andromeda Strain, Strain, Rising Sun. Yeah. I read significantly first... graphic novels, like graphic in terms of content for my yeah. level. Um, I read a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but I read the first, my first Stephen King book, Eyes of the Dragon. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good that one for good. young people. Yeah. Um, but I think my favorite book and my favorite series for sure was, was uh, Lord of the Rings. And I read that relatively early. Like I didn't I read that till college. Before middle school. Um, yeah, In fact, I really awesome. didn't dive into fantasy novels until college. I read a couple. I read like um, the R.A. Salvatore books in high school. Mm-hmm. And then I started Wheel of Time in high school. But I really picked that up in Lord of the Rings in college. Yeah. So, so let me let me jump off of that question. What's a book you've read lately? Recently, I'm, I well, I've got one. Um, I'm, I'm midway through it, but it's called the uh, the Infinite Game. Simon mm, Sinek. That is really good. Really good. Is that how you name S- Sinek? How do you say that guy's Simon name? Simon Sinek. Yeah. Sinek. Okay. Yeah. I I'd, I'd say um, that's yeah. his best book that I've read. And he's got a couple of really good ones, um, mm-hmm. but but yeah, it's it's just a, a cool concept of you know you're always looking for you know that next milestone or that next goal or that next whatever and you check it off the list, but shifting that um, outlook to a long term is really a cool concept. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh... getting a lot out of it most recent book I've read is The Silk Road, a very short introduction. Oh, okay. I haven't read that um, one yet. But I don't, I guess it's interesting, I don't read nonfiction much. And by much, I mean ever. So actually doing this podcast has been good because it's mm-hmm. given me a chance to read some more nonfiction. Uh, but yeah, The Silk Road, um, very short introduction, um, was, was really, really fun. A really good read. And very short read i mean it's, yeah it's nice to have a kind of a a quick book that you can read they don't all have to be thousand page tomes like lord of the rings or wheel of time yeah it's been a while since i've read a fantasy novel or even really fiction i do have a fiction novel that i'm in the middle of but i i kind of stuck um but i'm currently working through like seven books but one i'm really interested in is called see you at the campground Oh, yeah. It's about camping. Uh, the couple mm. that, that wrote it, they have a podcast called RV Atlas about RV camping, which I, I haven't checked out yet. But wait, the wait, wait. Are they paying us? Are they paying us, Eric? Blarvi Blatless. Lamping. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so they will be. We're they'll safe, be, guys. We're safe. They'll be coming along. Yeah. Huh. Um. Okay, no, I, so, on the same. Oh, I, go ahead. I, you know, Simon Sinek's Infinite Game. I really think that's an interesting novel, uh, or not novel, but book. He's had a few others. Um, you know, start with why, but also Leaders Eat Last, which I really enjoyed. Um, which that was, uh, I recommended that book to a a leader at my previous school shortly before we left. Because I think that that embodied a lot of things that would have helped kind of leadership in general. I I found that book to be just so insightful as a leader. Um, And it helped me in how I lead things. And Simon Sinek's stuff has been really good. Fits really well in with Jocko Willink's stuff. But the infinite game, as a coach, you know, when I take... um, when I go into a single game, right, a single basketball game, or even a single basketball competition, whether it's a tournament, it's like this is this is one part of a larger thing we're trying to do here, right? So in the course of a season, uh, how many games am I willing to lose? And it, it's the question is, well, 
depends on on what are you losing them for like uh am i willing to not drop a game or lose a game on purpose but am i willing to put the result of a game in jeopardy if it makes the team better in the long run yeah. um if i put all my eggs into the basket of winning this particular game but the team becomes more dysfunctional uh depends less on each other and eventually loses more games is that worth it and so I kind of, I tried to articulate that over the past few years, but that book really puts it into good perspective. Into, That's... I'm not playing, or I'm not coaching a single game. I'm not coaching even for a single season. I'm coaching for getting these people ready, these kids, junior high boys, ready for the next stage of their life. And if you peak in junior high, man, it's not good. Well, yeah. It's... Some of the some of the best advice I ever got from a good friend was to live your life by a set of principles and make decisions by a set of principles. And if you adhere to those principles that are you know basic and, and cover you know your entire life, oftentimes the the difficult decisions that you have to make are made easier. Mm -hmm. And you know that's something Eric I think you always do really well is you're good at stepping back and saying, no, why are we here? Why are we doing this? What's our overall overarching goal? Because you're right, it's not winning and losing. And it's certainly not a given rivalry game or whatever because they beat us last time. It's how are we molding these, in this case, young men to you know, prepare them for high school and life in the world and all of that. So, yeah, it's, but, it's but even really so, easy it's, to get caught up on those numbers short term. Yeah, it it is tricky because once we're in a game, I it's hard to really see beyond the game. Yeah. Right. So, if we're in the middle of a game, the objective there, and everyone in the team understands the objective, we're trying to win that game. Um, we're not throwing random sets of guys out there to play just so they can play. We are playing with the intention of winning. But there's certain lines I never cross. There's certain things I won't do, you know. And and there's there's certain understandings I have in my own head as to um, when do we know the game is decided, and how do we how do we respond to that too? And that that's that's always tricky because I'm also trying to think beyond the game. Hey, the decisions I'm making in the fourth yeah. quarter. How is it affecting the players who I expect to show up to practice the rest of this week and be ready for the, the game next week? Um, I can hurt the team in the fourth quarter by making decisions that are not, um, don't have long-term consequences attached well, to them. And what you're describing is what your favorite coach of all time has done for years. Bruce uh, Arians? Popovich. Oh. <laughs> and, and load management, yeah. right? Like that's, yeah. that's uh, his philosophy is rest my starters in certain games we're not trying to lose the game but we're looking farther ahead we're looking at the ultimate goal which is yeah the final. I, I guess i guess I, i've never thought of it like we've got a rest. well i guess the load management thing i've taken i've done that sometimes especially in tournaments so if we've got load management with a 12 year old well <laughs> no I, really the the idea being if we have a if we have a tournament, so we've got three or four games within a short two or three day time span. Um, you know, it's always tricky to, you know, you don't want to be in a situation against an, a clearly inferior team who steps up to the plate and, and matches you and matches your energy and, and keeps the game close because then you end up burning out guys who you want ready for three hours later. Mm -hmm. And because that can affect you. Now, I'll go back like a year and a half. We had a game. Uh, it was a local tournament. So there's public, public middle schools in this. We ended up in this game. We were down by four. We came back, tied it up. And we were riding probably seven guys. You know, we had five guys on the bench who didn't see a minute um, or saw like 30 seconds or a minute. I mean, it was very light we knew that we're once we're once we lose we're out so we're playing for keeps here and we end up going into overtime and we win this game in overtime 
we turn around and we have to play 30 minutes later against a team that we've been watching all weekend. That game, we're sitting there trying to figure out, well, we've got these starters. They've got to get their time in. So we don't even let them warm up. We get to the game. That ends up going to overtime. And we end up winning that one. Um, but I'd say those those seven guys saw, you know, those games are 24-minute total clocks. Those guys played 45 minutes on average. I, you know, but still, if you can, in certain circumstances, you try to rest those guys, especially if you have a lot of games in a short amount of time. Um 82 games in the course of a year is a, is quite a bit of games. So, yeah, I mean, and you got to watch those 12 year olds. They've got con- contract year coming up too. You know, they they've got to they got to feed their families. You yeah, know, that, we took they, they got to get their numbers up. That team went to nationals. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we okay okay pop. <laughs> All right. We don't want a Super Bowl. We want a Super Bowl ring. Bruce Arians. Yeah? How many has he won? None, but that's the okay. speech he gave to the Cardinals. Well, and good to I liked know. It. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a great speech. It's too it bad was it really didn't good. Work out, you know. What was that series <laughs> but, on Amazon? Uh, I had to go back and watch that. Oh, Follow yeah, the they Cardinals. do that special. All or nothing. Yeah, it was, it was good. good. All right. Let's uh, change tack a little bit. If you had intro music, what song would it be and why? Oh. So think oh, about it. Well, you like, heard it at the beginning of this podcast, folks. That's your intro music? <laughs> <laughs> Royalty free Muzak? <laughs> Who said I didn't pay royalties? Maybe I did. Okay, maybe you did. Adobe stock for the world. But I like, <laughs> I like this question, and I think Cameron, you've brought this up several times before. What's your walk-up music if you're a pitcher, mm-hmm. or if you're a batter in the major leagues? Um, mm-hmm. So, do you got one? Do you got one that pops to the top of your mind? I consider myself a, a pretty big sports fan, and I've followed the Dodgers for years, and you know. They've had a lot of successful teams over the years, a lot of great characters, a lot of great players. The, the, some of the fondest memories I have of, is when Eric Gagne used to come into the game, that big closer that threw 100 miles an hour you know, in the, the early 2000s. And he used to come into Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. And it was just... As soon as that came on, everybody went nuts, and then the the board flashed game over, game over, because you know he, he came in there to get three outs, and he he led the league in saves for a couple of years there, got a Cy Young, um, and I always thought, yeah, that's a cool song. That is a so great song, great. and it's a it has a great like the first time the first note you're like, okay, it's on now. Yeah, that is a great song. Yeah. How about you, Eric? Do you got one? I I mean, I'm kind of a late bloomer, I suppose, when it comes to appreciating music, especially popular music. Um, but we, I, you know, we talked about it before the podcast started. Um, I, there's no feeling in the world like listening to the first like two minutes of Top Gun. Oh yeah. Because when the, the bell tolls and you got that that music start, now it gets goofy when it turns into like the electric guitar, like the mid '80s electric guitar. I don't care for that, but that first couple of minutes where it's just that bell and that like, you know, it's just kind of like it gets me revved up. Love it. it. It's a good yeah, opening. That's a good one. Love it. Um. I think for me, and I keep tossing back and forth between a couple, but the first song, so I'll just go with the first thing that pops in my head, and that'd be Back in Black uh, by ACDC. Yeah. It's just. If you can introduce Iron Man in that, anything goes. I mean, 
Yeah. Iron Man's a great song. No, the the movie. The, it yeah, with the, Back in Black. Oh, okay. Or does yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It does. You're right. So, yeah, Back in Black, that's a, that'd probably be my go-to walk-up music. Uh, yeah. All right. It's Anything else? One. You got any questions? Oh, I mean, yeah, I can come up with some. You can come up with some? Well, <laughs> while you do that. What, 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 what? So I got one. This is okay. Go one. ahead, shoot, because this one's gonna be bad. One of my favorite um, to questions of this nature is: uh, if you could be the best in the world at something, what would it be and why? And don't say best husband, don't say best dad, because that's cheating. Um, give the people what they want. Do do something more entertaining mm. than that. I always, and I'll go first, um, I always look at it as I want this to be something that I can monetize. So, yeah, you know, I, I played basketball for years. That's near and dear to my heart. That'd be great. Um, you know, as much as I would love to be a great teacher and be the best in the world to that, hard to monetize that one. Um, and, and from from a sports perspective, if I could play golf or the best player in the world at golf, I could be the best player conceivably for several years. You know, I could go into my 40s probably and be the best player in, in golf. Um, and you can make a lot, a lot of money doing that too. So that's one. And then the other one is um, Bear Grylls. It's always been my favorite show. I think it'd just be cool to be dropped off somewhere in the middle of the woods and just not die. Um, give you a lot of street cred, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that, especially since um, lately I've been watching a lot of this show called Alone. Uh, and oh, you like and some other buddies of mine have been watching that. Bear Grylls, yeah. but without the camera crew, and this, these you know, contestants are basically dumped in very harsh conditions and have to survive. But if they make it last man standing wins half a million but the more i watch that show the more i'm like man i wish i could do that stuff like those skills are so cool um but you know be it fishing or shelter building or trapping or anything it's just amazing watching them so yeah i think mm-hmm. that would be a if you could say you're the best i guess survivalist is that what you i guess that's what, yeah. that's yeah. what make you camera outdoorsman yeah i mean that's that's a pretty lofty thing, I think. Um, how about you, Eric? Um, yeah, that's tricky. Because like Cameron said, yeah, I would like to be the best teacher. Like, that would be great. Um, you already got that one. Done. Check. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, You know, I guess I... If I was going to be the best at something, you know, that's, that's, I, I don't know, the best podcaster, the best writer, but see, like, none of those are, it's hard to be considered the best at something when there's so many. I'd be happy with being in the top 250,000 writers, you know? Like, I think you're being too humble for this wish. Yeah, that's that's like, not the question. The question I, well, isn't like. All right, I'd like to be the best writer. Two hundred fifty thousandth okay. in the world. Yeah, that's I'd not like to be the best ranking. writer. I guess. Yeah, so you kick old Billy Shakespeare to the curb. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, that's fine. That's a good one. Yeah, there like you go. It. I want to be the best writer. I like that. Take that, Steve. Uh, yeah, Steve. Um. For me, and I keep tossing it between two things. Best basketball trick shot in the world, bar none. Like, I'm money from this ridiculous trick shot. And, or, like, best foosball player ever. Mm -hmm. Those would be, like, my two. And so I wouldn't win as much money as Cameron. 
I wouldn't monetize that much, but man, I'd be fun at parties. And <laughs> I, would, I would take people to the cleaners in bar games. So yeah, that'd be my, that'd be my best. My Good sky one. hook would finally fall. It'd be automatic. <laughs> From the logo? <laughs> yep. It'd be awesome. Oh, uh, that sky hook is deadly. Deadly. It's it's literally like Anchorman. Sixty percent of the time works a hundred percent of the time. That's <laughs> the sky hook. <laughs> but with so much style though. Yeah. So much style. Yeah. Yeah, that would be my that'd be my you know, I'm gonna stick with it. I'd be the best trick ba- trick basketball shot. Yeah. Shooter, I guess. All right. Um Eric, what's your one that you're suspicious about? Suspicious? Your question. The one oh. that you're nervous oh. about asking. Mm. Uh, okay. Um What's the What's the worst thing you ever did as a child, and what was your punishment? Uh, okay. I, and I, I just really don't want to talk about it. <laughs> well, I'll yeah, start. That's a family show here, Eric. Yeah. Because there's so many things. That's Were you the, the Scranton problem. Strangler? As a child? Was? No. Yeah. No. I mean, they thought he was innocent. That's what Toby said. Yeah. Uh, um... Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, for me, probably when I was in middle school, um, seventh grade. Yeah, that's when I got. I, I became a little bit of a klepto. Me and a friend would uh, <laughs> go shoplifting. And we started out small <laughs> at uh, at the Coles grocery store stealing candy bars, and then we moved on to. Uh, the Walgreens. Oh, and, big time. Uh, stealing, Graduated. Started stealing the fancy candy bars, the Hershey Symphony bars. Um, yeah, not just Snickers. That's like and Grand Milky Larceny, we're, isn't it? We're moving on. And then um, started stealing like base, uh, baseball cards and basketball cards and, uh, and um, comic books and stuff like that. And then we moved on to the big time, which was the Shop Go. And that... Those of you that didn't grow up in Wisconsin, Shopko is basically, it's like a not as big Walmart, you know, kind of a catch-all type of store. And uh, so we went to the Shopko. We got away once. We went there once, got a big haul, candy, comic books, basketball cards. And then we went back Ooh. later in the week and they were wise to our game. And uh, I remember we... We loaded up, and we had, this is when we had starter jackets were really popular. Yeah. And we didn't really pack those things full. Yes. Um, and so we'd go pack them full of, like, all sorts of stuff. And um, made a purchase of, like, a candy bar. So we seemed legit. And then we'd walk out the doors. And so the next time we walked out is, uh, I, I remember me and Jason I don't think he's going to hear this podcast, but Jason um, was my friend. We walked through like, yeah, we did it. Bus. We were like jumping. Yeah, we got it. We made it. Biggest heist yet. We thought we were like in heat, you know, Ro- you know, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden I feel this hand hit my shoulder and it goes, Shopco Security, you need to come with us. And I just go, oh. And I'm like, and me and Jason are like, we look at each other. We look at this guy. And we like shamefully walk back to the security office and uh, they call, you know, they are writing it down. They're calling the police. They ask for my phone number. I lied and I gave them my friend's phone number, Michael. So again, I'm sorry, Michael um, gave my friend's phone number. So they call his house and they're like, yeah, that's not, that's not uh, our son. Sorry. So suffice it to say, my friendship with Michael ended that night. But um, <laughs> so then I had to give him the real number, and they called my dad, and he was pissed. And the police officer that arrested me went to high school with my dad, and it was bad. And there was many words said that I can't repeat, 
and I think I was grounded for a month and it was like hard labor. Like he didn't, yeah, he didn't just like say no TV. He like made me clean out the basement and like build break, a fence. Break like, rocks in the backyard yeah, with like a pickaxe. Seriously. And uh, yeah, it was bad. It was a really bad time. But suffice it, the, the, the turning point of that is that's when I was at my, in my mind, my lowest as a seventh grade kid. And uh, that's when I, like that, like that next week is when I accepted Christ. Because I'm like, well, I clearly need help here. And so. You were the thief uh, on the cross, huh? I literally was the thief on the cross. And I accepted Christ that next weekend. Um, and so, yeah, that was my, that was pretty easily the worst thing I've done as a kid. So, there you go, Eric. I set the sage up for you. Oh, good. <laughs> or Cameron, you can go. Um, well, or we I'll can go, because I don't want mine to be too memorable. Okay. We'll see uh, you in the middle. We'll forget about not it. Not so much a child. I mean, I was a minor. I wish Nick was here, because he had turned 18 three days beforehand. Yeah. And uh, we... Uh, <clears throat> Again, I was I was 17, not making a lot of great decisions, but uh, we had uh, kind of taken it upon ourselves to get some vengeance for for some friends of ours that had gotten hurt um, by these other guys, and these guys were all over 21, and so we went to their house um, late, late one night, drove my dad's truck, and we uh, we egged their house, egged their car. Uh, it was an El Camino. The windows were open, so we got the inside of the car, um, hit the tires, you know, the whole, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Came back the next weekend. Did it again. It's always the second time they get you. And 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 so that was fine. We get back to my buddy's house, Nick's house. And someone's like, oh, we didn't use all the eggs. Waste not, want not. <laughs> right? And so one of the guys is like, well, we got to go back. And I said, well, I don't want to go back. And his reply to me was basically this. Well, I'll, I'll drive your dad's truck. And in my mind, then I'm left with two choices. Either this guy drives my dad's truck, or I drive my dad's truck. And the thought had never occurred to me that I could just say, no, put the keys in my pocket and walk back inside. You could have made an omelet with those eggs. Like, you didn't have to right, even go back. Right. So we go back, and, and we got caught. We <laughs> Half of us got caught. Third time. And it was like 3 a.m. And the cops show up. And like, they make me call, and I just start weeping like a baby, like on the phone. And then my dad has to like come out, pick me up, but I have to drive. The, you know, like he has to come get me. My friend, you know, Nick, he's eighteen. His parents don't get called because he's eighteen. So, I mean, I get back home at like. 6 a.m. My parents are just, I mean, they're they are livid. And uh, they're like, well, get dressed for church. Ooh, good <laughs> one. So, I, good I, one. yeah, they're like, yeah, that's, there's something you need. It's to not get a good night's sleep and go to church. So we did. And, uh, man, it was just like a long day. And, uh, you know, the good thing that kind of came out of that um was uh the the one person they kind of allowed me to talk to was uh was my future wife so and we weren't yet dating but they're like she's the one person in your life that's not a screw up right so like you know you're not talking to your buddies cuz wait wait in Nick trouble. was in your life at that point so Nick What's that? Nick was, Nick was in your life at that point. Yeah, so he was. I, I he was just, trouble. Just want to clarify. He was. He was heavily involved in this. So they're like, "Yeah, you're not talking to Nick." 
Uh, yeah, I was grounded for like a month. And <clears throat> yeah, so oh, that was like twenty years ago, twenty-one years ago. I still my heart rate goes up a little bit when I think about the sequence of events and just the dumb decisions to like, yeah, I only have two choices here and I have to pick one. Yeah. I either give my give the keys to the truck to this other bozo or I do it myself. There's never a third option. Speaking of which, we think Biden and Trump are the only two options we have, right? Yeah. There there are other options, people. That's what I'm saying. If there's anything to learn from my mistake. Go Jorgensen. There's always a third option. Or Kanye. So, you can always vote for Kanye. Kanye 2020. Oh, I, I just oh feel gosh. like such an idiot. That entire sequence of events. All I had to do was say, no, I'm not going. And not only do I not get in trouble, but we never get caught for that thing either. But, you know, then I never learned my lesson either. Because I was the kind not, of person that gets scared straight. like. And you might not meet Amy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So. There you go. Mm. You got oh. one, Cameron? Or we yeah, I got one? one. Top it. Um, Eric is spot on about the one bad decision. Okay, you know, you usually can recover from that. But when you stack layers upon layers of bad decisions that's usually where when you get caught um so i this too was, was a couple days before my 18th birthday and i grew up in a very small town bishop california and it was the type of town where i never really got into trouble did, i just did did bishop sponsor us bishop did yeah <laughs> bishop chain, <laughs> chamber of, <laughs> chamber of <laughs> commerce <laughs> Um, it's a guy named Hank. Yeah, my phone's been ringing off the hook. <laughs> so, right before my 18th birthday, I'm getting ready to go to college, and we're just bored one night. So, it's... Uh, Always a recipe for good things. Exactly. So, it's my brother and I, and uh, we used to think we were so hilarious we would go, there was like a fast food joint on the north end of Main Street and a fast food joint on the south end of Main Street. So we would go through the drive through and order a bunch of just to-go ice waters, okay? And I would be dri driving. My brother is a left-handed left throw, left-handed pitcher, and it was just a perfect angle. We were driving down the road, and we would use these can these uh, cups of ice water and just hit people in the back of the head with it. Totally unprovoked. Totally wow. just because we thought it was funny. And um, we did this a lot, honestly. So it, it was kind of, we were overdue to get caught. And uh, Called so Bishop here we Blizzards, were. huh? You know it. <laughs> so we went out and we... we hit some people, haha, it was funny, you know, we'd, we'd uh, go down to the south end of Main Street, get some more waters, hit some more people, haha, it's funny. Um, and this one guy I had the audacity to yell at us after we hit him with the water. So, obviously, we can't let him get away with this. We need to turn around and throw the water Pride in. comes before the fall. And... Um, so as we were going by, I, I slowed down a lot so that my brother could take this water, hang out the side of the car, and chuck it at the guy. Unbeknownst to us, he had picked up a rock. <laughs> and it was, I mean, it was this size. And he picked up the rock and he chucked it at the car before my brother could really get the, the cup of water out. And the rock hit my windshield. So, you know, we figure we're going 20 miles an hour. That rock's going 20 miles an hour. And the only thing that prevented it from hitting my brother in the face is that it hit the, the wiper blade. So at the kind of at the base of the windshield, it hit the wiper blade. So, thank God, it could have been a heck of a lot worse. Thank God it didn't go through the window. 
it just stopped, hit the wiper blade, annihilated that, and fell off. So, um, you know, long story short, things happened that, you know, it kind of escalated from there. Um, could have been so much worse, but... Um, it was like, next was like an igloo cooler full of ice water that you got him with, and then he brought a boulder yeah. or what? <laughs> yeah, he pulls out a super soaker. It just it just got ugly. I don't want to talk about it. No, um, but it, it was just, again, we could have stopped after the first or second or third or fourth time, but we didn't, and um, very easily could have gotten in serious trouble there. Um, my brother wasn't hurt. I wasn't hurt. Um the guy just was soaking wet and is this something know. uh that your mom and dad have not found out about yet no they're they're well aware of it because okay. you know i'm, I'm driving i didn't want this with... to be the big reveal for them if no no no, no, no this episode dad bought dad bought after dark is also like midnight confessions yeah, exactly it it, it's kind of hard to hide the fact when you've got a big hole in your windshield so I was not in a financial position, believe it or not, to replace a windshield gotta with my own car. money. You got to have a windshield I'm, warranty. I'm I know that's, a that's shocking, to you know, 17-year-old self. <laughs> um, so what I ended up doing is taking a pizza box and duct taping it to, <laughs> to the windshield. So my first, I don't know, month or so of college, I was driving around with my car like that. That's incredible. So that was my punishment, among other things. But that was my main punishment. Kind of hard to look cool with a pizza box. It's kind of hard to look out your windshield if there's a pizza box on it. I mean, that's... Uh, fair. Uh, um, it's funny because each one of those stories highlights how stupid we are as kids. <laughs> Every, in so many different ways. What's, what's really look, great is look, Cameron and I were Well, both with your story, either I drive team. your truck... Your dad's truck or you drive your dad's truck? Those are your only two A or B, choices. which one? Yeah. <laughs> and as a teenage boy, you're like, well, yeah, those are my only two possible choices. There's literally no other way My hands to were go. tied, Mom. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Look, you don't understand. Those are the only options I had. <laughs> Did you think to stay home? Nope. <laughs> Mom, Mom, you weren't there. You don't understand. Like, it's just... He was really convincing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, or, What's interesting is because you talk up, we talk about these things because, you know, we assume that over time we kind of develop the the ability to predict outcomes and to consider consequences, right? Yeah. So, I had the wherewithal to consider the enormous consequences of letting somebody else drive my dad's truck, and was like, that is not happening. <laughs> But never considered, well, what are the consequences of me driving my dad's truck yeah. into a dangerous situation? Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, we thought we were being all tactical and stuff. And we, you know, we're prepared and we're like, well, what are we going to do if this happens? And we were idiots. Yeah. 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 And, and, and to your point, Jake, like we, we should have stopped four cups of water ago and and the decision that it was really no going back from is oh well how dare that guy yell at us you know exactly you can't let him get away with that yeah and then it was just he yelled because i threw an ice water at his face like well yeah <laughs> yeah i would yell at you too <laughs> but we so, were so justified we had this righteous uh, anger that no way is he going to get away with yelling at us yeah. so put this into perspective or into context to consider that there there are I had a lot of consequences growing up like I screwed up a lot right like and there was always something there to meet me and tell me yeah that that's not how that works kid there's a great deal of people who've gone a long time in their life without consequences right like each of our stories ended with a pretty severe consequence right Mm-hmm. We learned, yeah, you can't, you can't actually do those things. There's people our age who've never experienced those kind of consequences. Yeah, and if and this you can was, tell if this was seventh grade Jake, I'd be so jealous of them because it was terrible. But yeah. it's interesting because I feel like with each one of our stories, 
we learned something from that. And definitely in mine and, and with yours as well, Eric, there was a benefit. Like there was, there was a good outcome that happened much later, you know, after the punishment. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, there, there is, there can be some good things through trial, but you don't need to like self-inflict your idiocy to like learn no. a lesson. But that's that's usually how it happens. No, yeah, usually, <laughs> especially for teenage boys. boys but yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that's so funny. Um, I don't even really want to do another question now. I, really? I feel like that's oh, a. I, I mean, we can, but man, that's a. That's, that's gonna a be a tough one. one to top. Yeah, like all the questions that I keep looking at aren't they aren't that good. Really? Do so, you have posters up on your room walls? What? That's a question I got. I mean, I have these, but that's like that's not as good. Uh, what if? What if we tell a story of just a funny occurrence, be it our kids or a time together, or I'm I'm, I'm trying to I don't have anything in mind. Okay. Gosh, my son. Okay, well, here, here's I don't something. know how to... Okay, go ahead. Because this has to do with us. And we're only missing Josh. So, shortly before your your second was born, Cameron, we we had a stud party, but we insisted, or you insisted on staying in town. Yeah. So, we stayed at that, that hotel in Scottsdale. Yeah. That was comped for us, which is awesome. Yeah. But I remember... It was either the first or the second night we had been out. We had had dinner. We had had some drinks. We came back. We kind of hung out. And we're about to go out again. It's like 9.30. Well, we played golf that whole morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, so we went out that whatever Thursday or Friday. Yeah. Went out and drank, had a great time. And then we woke up and went and played a whole round of golf. Um, That's for right. For four or five hours. And yeah. then we like were wiped. And this well, was June because Evie yeah. was born in, in yeah. July. So, yeah. But what I remember most, and, and again, I'm trying to figure out which night it was, but it's coming around 930, and Josh and Jake are both like, let's go. We're ready. Yeah. And you and I, Cameron, are both like, is it bedtime yet? And, of yeah. course, Cameron, you, your, your son is a couple years old. I've got a daughter who's almost a year old at, old at this point. Um, and you and I are just both. We're done. It's 930. We're like, is it bedtime yet? And so Josh is like, hold on. And he grabs the coffee from the uh, from the coffee machine there. And he's like, just just chew on this. And it because it came in little pouches. He's like, just mm -hmm. put that in your mouth and chew on it. And I did that. And that was the first time I'd ever done something like that. And I was like, 15 minutes later, I was like, all right, let's do this. Yep. It worked. And, and I remember that distinctly when he when he did that. I had seen it on some special forces Bear uh, thing on, on Discovery Channel or something. And I'm like, hey, if it's good enough for those guys, it's good enough for me. So Yeah. yeah. Well, Josh is the he is an elite unit of recovering from hangovers. I mean nobody does it better <laughs> than him. So um, and then what else we went out and then we went to that one bar and we all got cotton candy. Yes, so we all got that sugar candy. rush too, and then we were all fine for the rest of the night. So, right. yeah, that was a that fun was the time. big thing. You're like, we get cotton candy, right? Like, we had to like harass our waitress to get us cotton candy. Uh -huh. I know. Yeah, that was that was the big selling point to me, and I don't have cotton candy, so I'm like, what is this? I think at one point, Cameron, you were stealing it from someone else's table. I was just gonna say, I we I did that at conference remember. too. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> We did that at and teachers' you stole conference all those too. desserts. Yeah, in, in front of like the district executives who are up at the front, like chatting, and we're just going around grabbing extra desserts. Yeah, but they were like I mean, they were going to go waste, desserts. right? Exactly. I mean, that's on them. Really. Now, what have we learned from tonight? If you have extra eggs, throw them. Or exactly. if you have extra desserts, you eat them. Yeah, that and was see, so that, funny. Well, well, and that was Cameron's. That's the funny thing is that was Cameron's first year with us. And so we went to conference with him, and I was, like, literally shocked. I'm like, what are you doing? And you're like, they're just going to throw it away, and you have, like, four desserts. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool, man. He's <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that – not – no. Even then, 
I couldn't really afford to eat those extra desserts, but definitely more so than now. Financially, you couldn't afford the free dessert. No, no, like oh, uh, like health, like health, calorically, metabolize, yeah. met- metabolism wise. Your mm-hmm. metabolicity was yes, not, metabolicity. Okay. Got it. Yeah. If yeah, I knew anything fun. about nutrition, I'd have a podcast called Metabolicity. <laughs> mm. <laughs> or that could be a really like C team superhero. <laughs> Metabolicity. <laughs> isn't that isn't that what Wolverine does? Doesn't he have like a massive like high metabolism? Sure, but I'm isn't thinking more like the... this guy can speed up or lower somebody's metabolism at will. Not, oh, somebody you know, else's? Yeah, oh. like. Oh, he'd like be his... making tons of money. Yeah, Jake. but he could he could also be a supervillain. <laughs> <laughs> and so Wolverine comes at him and just lowers his metabolism and makes him like yeah. fat. <laughs> yeah, and slow. Be... Oh my gosh, I would and like tired. <laughs> yeah, he's got kind of a little front porch now and. <laughs> See, this skill like is it. very useful as a dungeon master. See? There you go. Yeah, I I mean, I was a mediocre dungeon master, but... I mean, I'll be the DM. I'll think Hold of all on. sorts of Hold on, let me go get stuff. my dice. Okay. <laughs> uh, they're, they're at school. They're at school. Do you know how amazed kids are when I show them all those different kinds of dice? No. Their minds are blown. Like I, t- I have like a a big like gallon bag filled with uh, four sided die six. Uh, not e- I keep all the six in a different bag. Eight sided die ten, twelve, twenty, and they're like, "What are those?" And mm. then I have to kind of get into explain like this is from dungeons. And yeah, dungeons. but all the really cool kids they, they already know. know. They know. Yeah, they know. They I know do. what a D twenty is. I they do know have a one hundred sided die too. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I think I would need a ma- uh, magnifying glass to. It's not to hard that. to figure that one out. It really okay. isn't. All right. Huh. It, okay. Remember, um, Cameron, when we were when we were working at the, I know uh, what you're the gonna say. office together, and I thought of other those other superheroes. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> yeah. So Metabolicity leads me to my all-time favorite superhero, that. Uh, well, there's two. This is, and this is a, and I think, you know, you have your Avengers, you have your Justice League, but then you got to have like the support staff superheroes. <clears throat> so there's one guy who's called the Blink, and his superpower is he gets a full night's rest every time he blinks. <laughs> which being Talk a father, about a dad skill, sounds like the greatest power in all of humanity. Yeah. And so, like, he's the guy, he's, like, watching cameras. That's his job uh, at Avenger Tower. Like, he's just making sure, you know, the security check-ins are going the way they should. And, and the vibranium shipment came in on time. Because that's that's his power. And then there's another one who's above average man. And his power is, at any time, he's above average. At whatever skill or whatever it is. So like he's an above average basketball player, but he's not an the above average best. cook. Not no. the best, just above. No, average. but above average in everything. He has no weaknesses. Yeah, he's an above average fighter. He has above average intelligence, but if he needs to for one hour, he can become the greatest ever at one particular thing for one hour. So like if you needed him. But then never again at that. Point. Well, but after no, that hour, what happened? But, but so like he, if for that hour, if you wanted him to go one on one against LeBron James, for that one hour, he would just wreck LeBron James. Like he. Would well, dunk. LeBron would probably do some load management for that hour anyway. Well, yeah, I mean LeBron. Maybe LeBron's not the best. So Jordan. So he would posterize <laughs> Jordan for an hour. But then for after that hour, for twenty four hours, for the next day, he like he needs like a walker. Like and he needs someone to feed him because he can't do anything for the next day, so like, he needs to be shuttled off in a bus and taken care of. So, I'm just saying there's some other superhero options out there that 
really haven't been explored by DC or Marvel yet. Yeah. So that one would be really good as like an athlete because in a yes. seven game NBA series, there's always a day of rest between games. You bring him in for the like halfway through the third quarter, the fourth quarter, and finish a game. Mm-hmm. And the next day he just disappears. And then he comes back yeah. a day later in mm-hmm. time for game two. Yeah, and there's there's built in mystery and intrigue mm-hmm. and you could really build a story. So he disappears arc like Dennis Rodman around a, above Look, average man. God forbid the game goes to overtime and he's on the court. Well uh, if he's out there, it won't go to overtime. It's not well, happening. You don't know. No, I know. If he's a, okay. if he's the best I mean maybe. It's yeah. a team sport. Because if he does go to overtime and he's on the court during that, when his hour ends, <laughs> it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough sledding. Yeah. You, he's going to look like get, a puddle of goo. You could get a to... couple of seasons worth of episodes off of that just, just right there. Yeah. Wow. So, But I, I think of the two, I would, I would 100% want to be the blink. Like that just <laughs> has so much practical application. Yeah. Like, yeah. how rich would we all be if we needed to sleep for one second a day? You could use all that time. Well, how many times do you work. blink in a day? Like, well, and, and the way I'm sorry, the way I phrase the power is: whenever you choose to, you can get a full night's rest with okay. a blink. Yeah, and you can still choose to go to sleep if you want to, but you don't have but to. Why would I? Well, I don't know. Maybe people like the act of sleeping. I don't know, but if it's filled with nothing but pain, no. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, the blink the blink is not immune from arthritis. That's his big nemesis still. So <laughs> anyway, I was saying, if you're out there, comic book people, we got some ideas for you. The blink and above average man. And metabolosity. And metabolosity. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I think we've got something here. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we need to we need to hold those back because DC's Marvel. Yeah, I shouldn't. Promise. I shouldn't release them all right now. Yeah, yeah. They're, we'll lose the rights to them. So, just just say copyright. 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 TM. T- registered. It's not a I team. think we're good. <laughs> right? Trademark. We're good. Yeah. It's like declaring bankruptcy. Same thing. <laughs> I just declare say bankruptcy. <laughs> I'm. Right. I'm Rewatching The Office right now, and I'm li- have you wa- have you started listening to the oral history of The Office? No, I haven't. Oh, I saw that so good. that uh, link the other day that you sent me, and I just haven't done it. So good, so good. Yeah, I even got a Dunder Mifflin shirt on right now. Nice. I saw that. Yeah, I want to get a Vance Refrigeration T-shirt. Mm. Hey, you know, finish. go ahead. How about starting you know, your own shoe store for men called Shoe La La? <laughs> What was the last time you watched The Office? I actually just finished watching like it three nights ago. So you know the the two guys who work for Vance Refrigeration. The one guy kind of has like the like the crazy like slicked back Italian hair, mm-hmm. and the other guy. Yeah. Th- those two guys, because I, I was curious, because I see them like a couple times throughout the series, and they obviously have it's the same guys in every every time they come up. And so I kind of looked into it. Those two guys are, um, they're, they're two writers for the show. Oh, yeah? They're, they're two of the so writers. Those it's those cameos? Uh, like, uh, Lee Eisenberg and Gene something else. Uh, so, yeah, I was like, these guys, they, they appear too frequently, and they ha- or too infrequently, but they have these same parts, and they're definitely playing them up. Yeah, they've got to be writers, and they are, mm-hmm. and uh, and obviously a lot of writers were also in the show, right? Like B.J. Novak, Mindy Kaling, Paul Lieberstein, uh, Lieberstein. So it's just what kind of interesting. What character is Paul Lieberstein? Toby. Toby. I didn't know he's a writer. Huh. Like he he's primarily a writer. He just kind of got written, and like Phyllis Smith, she was a, a casting assistant. No way. So her job was to just kind of read scripts with people auditioning. And everyone who auditioned are like, she'd be great on the show. And so they wrote parts of her. That's why a lot of the people have the same first name. 
Right. Because it just it was easier when they were doing like the improv and stuff. Creed's first name is Creed. Creed Bratton yeah. is Creed Bratton. I mean, yeah. he has the same first and last name. Oscar, Phyllis. Um, but not Kevin. Well, not Kevin, no. Such a great show. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Jake, Jake it, it took you, what, 12 years to come around? Yeah, that's just typical. I still haven't watched Breaking Bad or Mad Men. And I'm not going to until like I never finished Mad Men. Oh, you'll, so, you'll show us. Yeah, yeah I never showed. I, I never. And then that. in three years ago, in three years, I'll be like, "Hey, did you hear about this Breaking Bad?" And <laughs> yeah, so that's that's basically how my TV life goes. I'm rewatching Parks and Rec right now, but so that's a solid show. Yeah, um, the early. I, I say this all good. the time, but the literally. The only three shows that my wife and I ever watch is The Office, Parks and Rec, and New Girl. Like, Mm -hmm. 95% of our TV consumption is those three shows. Yeah. And I was just, not just, but about six months ago, my wife and I rewatched most of New Girl again. Because you forget how funny it was, especially the early seasons. And then it just hits you we haven't watched that one yet. Oh, I'm not going to tell you to. Okay. But it's really good. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to. Thanks. We're going to reverse psychology, MJ. Yeah. He'll, never, he'll never catch on. All right. Well, I don't have the power of the blink, so I'm going to have to sign off here. <laughs> is, that, is that how it would work? <laughs> They'd have to be emphatic blinks. I mean, you can't just blink. That's... <laughs> All right. No, mean I, I it. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, All right. Well, that was uh, Dad Bod After Dark. Thanks for joining topicless, us. Topicless. Topicless. Not topless. Topicless podcast. Topics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm Jake. I'm, I'm Eric. Cameron. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, follow, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.